every time I preach the gospel, it's like Lion King. You know, remember the, 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 the hyenas are sitting around and they go, Mufasa, ooh. Say it again, Mufasa, ooh. And that's how the gospel should be to us. We should be like, say it again, oh, yes. And I, I tell our church all the time, if you ever tire of hearing the gospel, then you should ask, what happened to you? And if it isn't good news every time you hear it, if you don't have a, a ringing amen in your heart, and you don't find yourself filled with joy over what God has done in Christ, then maybe it's possible you never believed it in the first place. But for those of us who believe and have received it, we can't get enough of it. We can't get enough because we know that we were dead in the trespasses and sins in which we once walked. We were following the course of the world. We are following the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that's now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. We were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. That's who we were. But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up with him, and he seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you believe that every sin you've ever committed or will commit has already been nailed to the cross, has been forgiven through the blood shed on the cross of Jesus? Amen? That we have no fear of going to God ever. We can approach him, and his throne of grace is wide open because he doesn't see us as sinners but as saints. And that's amazing. Paul can write to the church in Corinth, and call them saints. Have you read that letter? They're a mess. I mean, it's a horrible church. And God in Christ sees them as holy, forgiven, sanctified, set apart. It's amazing. I, I, I love Jesus' prayer in John 17. Father, I pray. This is at the end of the prayer. Father, I pray for all those who will believe. Father, I pray that they would know, that, you, that you, would, you would show them that you love them like you love me. It's incredible. Have you ever just sat back and said, God the Father loves me just like he loves Jesus Christ? You were children of wrath. Now by God's grace, through faith, you are children of God, co-heirs with Christ, owners of all the spiritual blessings. Because of nothing you've done, but because of all that he has done. I had a guy that I was meeting with once, just struggling to believe this. He came to me and he said, Jeff, you don't know what I've done. And I said, well, why don't you tell me? He goes, like, it's so bad. And he proceeded to tell me, and I said, yeah, that, that's really bad. <laughs> You're right. He goes, see? I go, what do you mean, See? He goes, see, God can't forgive that. I said, man, you're so full of arrogance that you think your sin is bigger than his grace? Who do you think you are? You, you, his grace is so much bigger than your sin. You're making yourself to be bigger than God by saying your sin is unforgivable when you have a God who's poured out his own love for you through his son and cried out from the cross when they didn't even know what they were doing. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Like, that's the kind of grace he has on you. And he said, I just can't receive it. I said, it's not because you don't actually believe it, in terms of like that God's grace is sufficient. It's because you still believe in yourself more than that. You're still looking to you. And so the reason why you can't receive it is because you only can see you instead of him. He, he walked away from the faith. And just two weeks ago, this is like five years ago, two years ago, or two weeks ago, he shows up in our gathering, comes to me and goes, I believe. And he said, I'm, I'm getting help right now because there's a lot of reasons why I have a hard time believing, and I know that. And, and there's some addiction in my life that I want to see change. But he goes, he goes I, I know it's a, just a little bit of belief, but that's all I got. And I said, that's all you need because he's big enough. And I was just so thankful. I mean, it was five years ago that I shared the gospel with him, but it took five years for it to finally take hold. But he never forgot that conversation. In fact, he said, you remember that time when we were at my house and I told you all the things I ever did? I said, oh, I'll never forget <laughs> and he said, he said, I didn't believe it because I've done some horrible things. He said, even this last Sunday, he said, I still 
every once in a while, like it, that just, all that stuff comes back, and that's all I can see. And I said, and I'm just going to keep asking you to see that putting on, put on the cross, that every one of those things you've done has been paid for in full. You've been saved from the penalty of sin. God is not angry at you anymore. Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. His grace is sufficient for you, brother. And I'm so thankful that the gospel is the power of God to save from my past. I will tell you, I'm not going to tell you all I did in my past because all we end up doing is glorifying our sin when we do that. But I will tell you, I've got a lot to boast in in terms of my sin. If you want to boast in how bad I was, I've got a long way to go. I can tell you a lot of stuff, right? And I don't say that to, to like magnify sin. I just say it to go, I have a great Savior. Because every time the evil one tries to bring up my past and what I've done, and I see Jesus, it makes me that much more thankful for him and what he's done in Christ for me. Amen? And so fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. 